said, stick by me, you'll be your guiding hand. But don't ask me what I think of you, I might not give the answer that you want me to. So we've got this uh, Defender TDCI, a uh, latish model, so it's this style of Defender anyway, uh, in for uh, various jobs. It belongs to a local Woodlands Trust, it's one of the Rangers vehicles. Um, one of the things we've got to do is tune him in a spare key fob, remote key fob. And I did have some trouble doing this the other day, uh, and I don't know why, and I was going round and round and round in circles, uh, but I've learned something. Um, um, every day's a school day. And I'll tell you what I've learned, uh, and this might help you if you ever go to order a uh, key fob, a replacement key fob for, for, for your Defender. So I keep this early, well, now know it's early, I keep this key fob on the shelf, and the part number is uh, YWX101 220G and that is a real common fob use it on discovery ones uh, defenders some of the range rovers all sorts so it, it covers all bases and i tried to, to to tune this fob into this car with our diagnostic equipment uh, yesterday and spent hours going around in circles and not knowing why it wouldn't work and the reason it doesn't work is because i was trying to tune in the wrong key fob i now realize that um, they superseded to uh, uh, a, a, a key fob that looks absolutely identical uh, but it works on a different frequency and that frequency which is on the back is 315 megahertz which differs to the earlier version so as you can see it's completely uh, identical in appearance to the early one but it works on a different frequency and so for your information if you ever go to order a key fob for your TDCI Puma style defender the one you want is a YWX 101-1230G uh, and might save you the pain that I've just been through trying to tune in the wrong one uh, some of the other jobs we've got to do on this, uh, the rear door doesn't open, it's driving the guy mad, uh, he has to put all his gear in and out through, through over the front seat, so we'll try and sort that out. Um, it's had some new spot lamps fitted, which is a fairly easy job, uh, Just the, the old ones just had uh, tarnish reflectors. And then he's complaining that this door uh, is also difficult to open. So uh, we do fit a lot of um, uh, door catches on defenders. Uh, if you ever do, just use a genuine one, the pattern ones are no good. So I kind of thought we'll be, we'll be fitting a door latch on it for his door problem, but it's not. The, the problem is here, Caden, if you shut, uh, there's the problem, the bottom door here just worn out. Again, that's, that's quite a problem. Uh, I'll probably get Caden to uh, have a go at changing that. Fortunately, it looks like someone has fitted stainless steel bolts in there, and that's a good thing. And the reason why, is you can have an awful battle with these these bolts that Land Rover fit like all the bolts that Land Rover fit on defenders are too long and the bolts go through into some cage nuts on this door pillar and what happens is the end of the bolts rust and you'll go to undo them and they'll they'll turn a few turns and then you'll come to the rusty bit and then it wants to break or twist the cage nut and then you're in a whole world of pain um, so then you'll be uh, drilling the heads of the bolts off or sometimes if you're lucky you can get them to come undone uh, a few millimetres and then slip a hacksaw blade down here and try and cut through them. Uh, but when it goes wrong, it's a royal pain in the arse. So the fact that someone's fitted some stainless steel ones in here, hopefully that'll be a fairly straightforward job. So we'll come back to that when, uh, when Caden's swapping that hinge over. So this is one of the kind of jobs me and Caden get. We're in the back of a 110 Land Rover owned by a local Woodlands Trust and the back door won't open. It's completely full of gear in here which we've had to bury a hole through to get to the catch which just refuses to come undone. The door trim has been riveted on. We can't get to the to the back of the catch to, to undo any bolts so we're going to have to cut through the striker pin inside here. Sparked two stroke petrol, gonna be fun. We're in or out. So as we said earlier, we had a bit of a drama replacing this rear door latch on the uh, on the uh, Woodland Rangers Defender. 
uh, the back of the car was uh, completely full of uh, the tools that the guy uses, chainsaws, straps, etc., ladders. Uh, so they had to move quite a lot of that out and then Caden buried his way through all that lot and managed to get to the back. Um, but we found the, uh, the, the door card uh, is riveted on. It's not easy to get the door card off with the back door shut. Um, so we elected to cut the striker pin, uh, which then enabled us to open the door. So we're going to fit a new uh, striker pin plate. Um, this one that we've cut has got a big wear groove in anyway, where the door's been opened and shut so many times. So there's no loss there really. Uh, we just had to do that to get the, to get the back door open. Um, this latch doesn't lend itself to being repaired. It's all riveted together. Um, and I'm sure if I did take it apart, possibly I could fix it, but is it really worth the time and the labor? Um, also putting the key in this lock uh, this lock hardly turns, it feels all gritty and seized. That's probably because uh, this particular one has got central locking, so the chances are this has never been locked and unlocked with the key. Um, so getting this uh, out and working and moving again is probably gonna be another waste of time. Uh, so we've got a new barrel and key to go in the new latch on the back of the car, which has been fitted. There's just a tiny little spring-loaded uh, tiny little plunger, little pip there, that when you push the, the, the barrel in, this locates into a hole and stops it from being pulled back out. Uh, chances are, if I've got this one out, we'd probably find that these uh, brass tumblers are all seized and, and worn anyway. So, new one of those, new one of these. Uh, yeah, and that's uh, probably more than ready for replacement. Well, there we go. Now our local ranger can hopefully get to all his tools and equipment without having to climb over the over the seats. So there's a new striker plate fitted and the new door latch. And hopefully it'll work now. What'd you say, Freddy? What do you reckon? Should we give it a go? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so the other job we've got on the uh, 110 belonging to the Woodlands Ranger is he's told us that the reverse lamp doesn't work. Um, he's checked the bulb apparently, but we will double check that. But the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the ignition on and uh, we're going to put the gearbox into reverse, take the lamp out and check that we've got voltage coming to the bulb and then we'll go from there. So we'll come back to that. So we've taken the lamp off the back of this defender and uh, using a, a test light, we've checked to see if there's any voltage coming to the bulb and using it. Um, but prior to that, the bulb we took out, which was an LED one, which I'm not a great fan of, actually came out in two bits. So we thought we'd try a new bulb, a normal bulb, but unfortunately we still don't have a working reversing light and no voltage to it. So we'll have a look inside, look at some fuses, see if any of those are blown or... Uh, and the next thing we'll be looking at is the uh, switch on the gearbox. So uh, we'll come back to that. All right, so we've checked out the, the back end. We've got no voltage there. Uh, the bulb, the LED bulb was in two bits, which we didn't like. We swapped the bulb for a new one. We still want no reverse light. So we'll check the fuses now. On these later Defenders, TVCI models, fuse boxes up here underneath the steering column and there's two plastic screws which you can normally turn with your thumb and drop the fuse box down and this is the legend for the fuse box and I'm looking for the symbol for the reverse lamp which is here so it's a symbol of a lamp with an R in the middle uh, so that's the that's the fuse for the reverse lamp so that tells me it's one two three four fuses down on the right hand side and it's a 10 amp fuse. This little fella here is a little tool for pulling the fuses out. So we'll go to that fuse. One, two, three, fourth down on the... Right hand side. And I've pulled the wrong one out. Put that down there for a minute. Not easy to see up here. There we go, that's the fourth fuse, that's a 10 amp fuse, and if I look up there in the light, oh no, 
that's blown. So there's a good chance that's our problem. So we'll replace that fuse and then we'll come back. We've got a new 10 amp fuse. We'll poke that in the hole. And then uh, Caden here will walk around the back and uh, see if we've had any, any joy. Here we go. Lights on. Oh yeah. Okay, so Caden's taken these uh, bolts out of the hinge here, and here are the cage nuts that I spoke about, which can cause you problems. So that's uh, is, the, the stainless steel fixings are a, a good idea for two reasons, really. One is they're less likely to rust up and seize in these cage nuts, uh, and secondly, the bolts that Land Rover use from the factory just tend to rust and then you just get all this rusty streak down your door hinge all over your paintwork so the stainless ones are a good idea um, Land Rover have used bolts like like all Land Rover bolts they're, they're almost getting on for twice as long as they need to be and what happens is that not only does the head go rusty and make it look crap um, also this bolt will, will rust on the end and you'll try and undo this bolt and it will come undone come undone come undone and then it will come to the rusty bit and the rusty bit will seize up there in that in that cage nut and try and turn the cage nut out and then you're just going nowhere with it so really good idea to get yourself some stainless steel bolts um whoever fitted these didn't put any copper slip on we will because uh, you can see they're actually are getting a little bit corroded so we'll put some copper slip on these bolts and uh, we'll fit the new hinge so here's the new uh, lower door hinge for the uh, Defender that we've got replaced. Um, as you can see, it just comes uh, as a bare metal. Uh, so we need to, first of all, degrease that because it's, uh, it's packaged with a light film of oil on it to stop it rusting. And then uh, once it's degreased, we'll prime it with a primer and then we'll give it a top coat of the body color, which in this case is white. And then uh, you can watch Caden fit that said hinge on. So oh, there we go, uh, the door hinges now fitted on this Defender that's owned by the local Woodlands Trust. And that concludes the work on that car. Uh, so that'll be back off to its owner and back to work probably as soon as tomorrow. Now, while I'm on door hinges, I'm just gonna show you something else. This is the door hinge on a 19, late 1950s, I think, uh, Land Rover Series 2 that we have here at the workshop at the moment. Um, and I'm going to show you the difference between this and uh, a more modern Defender door hinge. So we just showed you replacing this Defender door hinge. Um, it doesn't lend itself to repair. It's one use only really. It's a shame. It could have a replaceable pin and a couple of bushes that you could knock out. And then it would go again almost indefinitely. But where it is going is in our scrap bin. Like everything these days, nothing's made to last. I showed you a Series 2 door hinge just a minute ago. Uh, that's from the 1950s. That has replaceable brass balls. You can replace the pins, you can replace all the components, and that door hinge will last indefinitely. And the proof's in the pudding because it's a 1950s vehicle. And it's 2024 now, and that hinge is still on the car, and it can be on there forever because I can repair that. Lastly, on the subject of door hinges, in another video, um, when I can get um, three Land Rovers from three different decades here, um, or three different Defenders in particular, I'm going to show you why the reason this door hinge is worn is all the fault of Greta Thunberg, Chris Packham, Greenpeace, the United Nations, and those wankers in orange t-shirts that glue themselves to the road. Um, so we'll do that video on, a, on another occasion. In the meantime, I think I'm turning into a bit of a geek talking about door hinges. The other good thing about Series 2 door hinge repair kits is these brass balls really lend themselves to fitting straight up in your nose like that. They make quite a nice fashion accessory if you're off to a, a party or a, a high class event. Uh, there was more, one more thing with this uh, white defender that I forgot to mention. Um, tucked up on here on the sun visor uh, is a piece of paper which I think is for address to you guys.